Hi everyone. Um, today we're talking about intermolecular forces, so between molecule forces. Um, that always requires that you have two molecules. And we've seen a couple of examples of where these show up um, in places maybe you've heard of them before. We've been using purple as our intermolecular force color. And we have these intermolecular forces, hydrogen bonds between water molecules in ice and also in liquid water. Also, when we look at DNA um, and we're looking at the attractions that are holding the base pairs together. Those are intermolecular forces, um, and we saw those zoomed in a little bit here. I'm also going to use, you'll see a little bit of pink, um, to emphasize where we have polar bonds and therefore partial negatives and partial positives. So coming to our intermolecular forces, um, we have a whole bunch of them listed here, okay? We will see these in later chapters in some of my classes, so chapter 16 and chapter seven, so not there yet, but we're gonna look at um, our first three here, okay? London dispersion forces, dipole-dipole attractions, and hydrogen bonding attractions. Bonding in quotes, because it's not really a bond, all right? With these, these are listed in order from weakest to strongest. And there are all kinds of exceptions to the rules, um, but we're gonna go with just the basic trend here, okay? So down here at the bottom, we're gonna say that these tend to be our weakest intermolecular forces. And because they're weak, um, that means that the molecules are relatively easy to separate. And because they're easy to separate, that gives us relatively low melting and boiling points. Because when you melt something or you boil something, if we're melting it or boiling, we're pulling the molecules apart. So if they're weakly attracted, it's easy to pull them apart. Doesn't take much energy, low melting point and boiling point. At the other end of this, everything opposite is true, okay? So up here, we're gonna be looking at our relatively strongest intermolecular forces. Um, and so these are harder to separate. Um, so. They're just stuck, more stuck together. Still separate molecules, but a little bit harder to pull apart. And because they're harder to pull apart, that means they have higher melting and boiling points. So higher melting and boiling points. Um, again, more difficult to pull apart, okay? So let's take a look at, um, we'll start at the bottom and we'll work our way up, okay? So we'll start here. Um, with our induced dipole, induced dipole attractions, that's one way that you'll see these described, or London dispersion forces, or London forces, okay? Sometimes you might see me write LDF for London dispersion forces. These are generally um, very weak, um, but a few things we want to know about them. We can find these between all molecules. So all of these intermolecular forces are just a relationship between two molecules. And we have those in our lives all the time. We could make an analogy to humans, okay? This is me, this is someone else. Um, you can have just a chance bump, or you can be like, you know what? We are best friends. We're always hanging out. We always face each other this way. Um, and so we have different types of between person relationships, also different types of between molecule relationships. So every pair of molecules is able to have these bump into you chance London dispersion forces, um, but these are especially important between nonpolar molecules and also large molecules. All right, so between nonpolar molecules and large molecules. So something like, not a very polar water molecule, but here I've got a CH4 and another CH4, okay? These can, like strangers, bump in, oh, hey, how, how are you? And then goodbye, all right? You bump as you're on the bus, in the hallways, whatever, um, quick interaction. Um, and so these just last for a moment, these interactions between nonpolar molecules. Um, there's a brief change in the electron density in the molecule. So where you might have your electrons just in a nice round blob, then those turn into, for a moment, a little bit of a warped blob, okay? Um, so small, quick chance interactions, we could say. 
So as an example, if I want to sketch one of these out, I've got my CH4 molecules here. So CH4 brings its group of electrons and everything else nearby another CH4, all right? And they just have a fleeting intermolecular attraction. And you might get just the tiniest partial negative and the tiniest partial positive. That's not a whole negative or a whole positive, that's just for a moment, um, they're sticking together. And so one way to describe this, where we see something a lot like this um, in our everyday life, is this is basically like a temporary static attraction that you get, say, when you put your clothes in the dryer, okay? So if I take sheets and sweaters and I collide them and I collide them, eventually sometimes they'll stick for a little while, um, but then they fall back apart, okay? And the bigger you are, remember large molecules I said have a lot of these dispersion forces, the bigger you are, the higher the chance that you're gonna stick together for a moment. If I throw sheets in the dryer, those big sheets are probably gonna come out stuck together. If I throw socks in, they'll probably just maintain their distance more easily, okay? So we see that these are especially important for our nonpolar molecules, like our CH4s, and also for large molecules. So now we're gonna look at something a little bit stronger, okay? So let's take a look at dipole-dipole attractions. So dipole here um, is the same as when we have talked about saying that I have a polar molecule attracted to a polar molecule. And we have used this pink big arrows to show polar attractions. So that might be something like HCl. And remember, it always takes two, right, to have this relationship. So here's another HCl, all right? We know that HCl is polar, right? Chlorine has a greater electronegativity. And so I could draw, those are those big arrows where electrons are getting tugged towards the chlorine. All right, so when we talk about who's involved in these type of attractions, this is always going to be polar molecules, two polar molecules. They might be identical polar molecules, or like I've shown here, or they might be two different polar molecules. Either one works. All right, this is going to be the attractive intermolecular forces between the permanent so not just for a moment, but permanent, maybe this is like you're permanently related, related to somebody, dipoles of two polar molecules. And so that ends up looking like this. These permanent dipoles are these big shifts, more negative, more positive. And they are always going to, these um, molecules are always gonna line up, not where we have the two positives near each other, because they would repel, but where we have opposite charges attracting. So the chlorine, the negative, is attracted to the positive, the hydrogen over here. And so I end up with an attraction that looks like this, all right? This is a little bit stronger because there's this permanent like way that we can have opposite charges attracting. This was just randomly bumping into each other. Here we have that permanent orientation of more negative to more positive. Now, a special type of dipole-dipole attraction is what we see when we have water. Okay, so let's unpack what's going on with water a little bit here. I'll slide this down. So water is just a strong version of dipole-dipole attractions. It's not really bonding, okay, because you can see that these two molecules are still separate entities, okay? They are not bonded together. There's no stick connecting them together, all right? So hydrogen bonding, um, we're going to see that we always need two types of um, molecules, okay? We need a donor molecule. It's like if you're setting up a nonprofit or a charity or something, you need a donor. And that will always be either an OH or an NH or an FH bond. Um, in all of those situations, our H ends up strongly, partially positive, okay? And then we need an acceptor um, so the other molecule has to be an acceptor, and that means it will contain either an O or an N or an F, and those acceptors always have partial negative charges. These are large fixed partial charges as opposed to the partials I saw here that were temporary, okay? So these are large and fixed. So when we think about hydrogen bonding, we're going to be seeing, like we just defined here, the hydrogen in an NH, OH, or FH attracted to an O or an N or an F. And let me just remind you, we're looking at water here, but let me remind you that if I look at the bond OH, 
So that would be like my O here and my H here. The electronegativities, for O it's 3.5 and for H it's 2.1, okay? And so remember, we had drawn little bond dipoles to say, hey, the electrons are getting tugged towards the higher electronegativity. And then we took both bonds and said, hey, the oxygen is pulling those um, electrons from both hydrogens. And that was where we came up with these bond dipoles, okay? And so another way that we can think about the bond dipole is to say that these hydrogens are always giving some of their electrons some of the time over to oxygen, and that means my hydrogens end up with a partial positive charge, and my oxygen ends up with a partial negative charge. So these partial positives and partial negatives are what are gonna enable the hydrogen bonding to happen. So if I come over here and sketch, basically what I have with the models here, okay, I'm gonna rotate them just a little bit here. So if I have an O with some H's there, those lone pairs on. What we just talked about here um, was that we have those uneven electron sharings, right? And the partial charges are gonna help us a lot with the hydrogen bonding. We can use the pink arrows, the dipoles like we did here, but let's use partial charges. So this oxygen we said has a partial negative charge. Notice this is big compared to this tiny temporary one. So this is permanent, this partial charge is staying here. It's a Greek lowercase delta with a negative. And then this hydrogen has a partial positive charge. So I'm sitting here, and when the next water molecule comes by, the H that's partially positive is going to, and I can finish adding all of these partial charges on here. So the partial positive H finds the partial negative oxygen. These partials are coming from those bond dipoles. And then we have this nice attraction that forms here between opposite charges. Here is my intermolecular force between the O and the H. I didn't highlight it before, but these little dashes I'm making, those are my intermolecular forces, right? Um, and so if I look here, I can think about my OH here. This is being my donor, right? With the partially positive H. That was what we had talked about over here, partially positive. And then here, this O is acting as my acceptor because it's got a partial negative charge. All right, so that gives us a look, the sun is changing here, a look at three different types of intermolecular forces. These opposites here, we have our London dispersion forces that all molecules have. And then if you're a polar molecule, you also have dipole-dipole and London dispersion. And if you're a particular type of polar molecule that has an OH, NH, or FH in it, then you can do hydrogen bonding attractions, which are the strongest of these three. And we would say if you can do that, you also are able to have dipole-dipole and London dispersion. But keep in mind that whatever is strongest is going to typically have the greatest impact on all of your physical properties like melting points and boiling points. So we always want to identify what types of IMFs are present, but also what are the strongest IMFs or intermolecular forces. So we want to look as soon as we have a pair of molecules for O's and N's and F's, because if I have an OH, NH, or FH, I've got hydrogen bonding. Say I have a hydrogen connected to a chlorine, that's just polar, not hydrogen bonding. Or say I have an H connected to a carbon, well, that's a nonpolar molecule, so the best I can do is London dispersion forces. So practice, and these are really powerful, like we started with. They're going to connect back to how DNA sticks together, why water molecules stick together in your um, cup that you're drinking out of, um, all kinds of different stuff. So have some fun. Practice.